Welcome back to Gun and the Go. Hey, welcome back. It's great to have the Duluth, Minnesota trip all wrapped up, and now we're finally moving into 2020, the year of the pandemic. And it actually started out kind of a crazy year for us because we were thinking about the whole, like, should we sell a house, go full time? What, you know, what are we gonna do? But we had one major problem that we had to address, and that was how can we even move our 28 foot travel trailer around safely because the half ton Suburban was not cutting it. It was white knuckle experience. So the big thing for 2020 was to upgrade to the 2017 F350 with the diesel in it. We were looking for something a little smaller, but that truck was right in Eau Claire. We were heading out to run an errand and thought, let's just pop into Ford and see if it's our lucky day. And this truck was set up exactly like we were looking for, but it had the diesel and we did want that and it just was too good to be true to be sitting there and that truck was an amazing truck and i say was because some of you already know what we've gone to since but we'll talk about that at a later time that that was a great truck and it it really got us out and around so the first thing that we did we got the truck and a couple days later we loaded everything up and so let's go and test it where, where are we going to test it started Missouri. <laughs> yeah we basically jumped straight out an hour or two to the mississippi river from where we lived in eau claire and drove the mississippi all the way down and that was nice because there was a lot of hills and it, it was it was a nice test and i'll tell you the truck was amazing i i my face still hurts from the the grin that i had <laughs> Uh, from ear to ear on how amazing that truck handled compared and uh, it was fun so we did a quick I think we were gone four days yeah we had to be back for some family in town so we had a quick trip we had actually talked about doing a two week but we actually stayed we, we did took us ten days to do the deal on that truck and by the time we got the truck we only had like five days yeah. so we ended up being gone for uh, like four or five of them and we ran down to Hannibal, Missouri, which is where the story of Tom Sawyer and the whitewash fence and all that uh, took place. Mm -hmm. But with the pandemic and everything, we just put we put everything on hold. We kind of wanted to start testing the waters of traveling and RVing, and especially with our with our new upgraded vehicle and just seeing if this was really something that we wanted to do. Anyway, it was a fun trip running down to Hannibal, Missouri. I think it was a 10 hour yeah, it sounds good. We ended up coming back in the same day, which is kind of neat, but yeah. what did we do when we were there? Uh, we went to a nice campground there, the Mark Twain uh, Museum. We saw a lot of the museums downtown and walked around. It's where the cave is, which is part of the, the story of Tom Sawyer. Yeah, we saw the big wall um, that blocked the city and helped it from the flooding. Yeah, oh, that's right, the big flood wall. Um, saw a dead animal in the <laughs> <laughs> I remember that Street. now. Um, and this was this was a year and a half ago for us already as we sit here in 2022 so, so we're trying to remember all this too but we ended up not doing videos and it was really hard for me but i still didn't have any of my gear and we just decided you know let's take this time as a family test the waters because if this whole rving thing doesn't even happen i don't want to have waste my time with like one or two videos so I just decided to go and I ran a live stream like we did in Duluth uh, with my cell phone and walked around and just showed the city for an hour or two and it was a lot of fun. And so that's what this footage is from and we actually were in the museum. Again, this is a little different from the content you'd see on YouTube. It's kind of long and we're just like walking around and talking a lot but um, it is nevertheless memories of our family's adventures, something that we'd like to have on the channel as we inch closer to the good old videos that we're gonna be rolling out pretty soon of our 2021 adventures. While we were in Hannibal, we went to the cave and that, the kids had a great experience there. It was the first cave that they went into. And so it was really neat for them to see all the history. And we also did the tower that's in Hannibal and that was a great view. You could see miles away and it was a beautiful day. Yeah, being a, it's along the Mississippi, it's very hilly and Kind of doesn't look like what you normally see around the Midwest. Lots of hills, bluffs, beautiful country driving along there. And then the campground that we stayed at was the, was it Mark Twain campground? Yeah, Mark Twain Cave campground. I yeah. mean, there's only the one. It's where the caves are, and there's a campground right there, and it was yeah. pretty nice. It was nice. We enjoyed being there. It was in the kind of in the country a little bit, and it was just a great location. Yeah, and it was great for us to be able to not only be more than an hour away from home, but to drive through several states to get all the way down to Missouri and come back again in one day and everything was awesome and I think when we got back from that trip it was like it was go time 
we had some things to sort out and we ended up doing the one month test where we went all the way down to Florida. Those live streams in 2020, which took place in August and September of 2020, are going to be coming up next. But uh, we wanna go ahead and show you this live stream, and I cannot wait to get the video started here of season one very soon. Hello everybody. If anybody's sitting in chat, we are in Hannibal, Missouri at the Mark Twain Boyhood Home. We uh, just walked through the museum, had a good little stroll through there, and now we're uh, gonna go and continue on the tour up to check out, I don't know, is this supposed to be the... Huck Finn's house. Huck Finn's house up here. So hopefully uh, we get some good signal here. We've been internet deprived. But if you are uh, here, say hello in chat. Here goes Alex. You're about to enter the Huck Finn house. Please respect the markers and do not move ahead until the next area is open. Okay. Dad would have to duck. Jeez, I'm about to hit my head. How's it going there, Steve Gaming? So this is Huck Finn's house. If you read the books, I am, uh, yeah, it's like, let's see if I can turn my camera around here. There's that ugly guy. Look at this. My head is in the rafters. Not made for 6'3 people. <laughs> All right, let's switch that back around. Yeah, not too bad. I'm, we're doing pretty good. We, we've had some internet issues, uh, you know, down here in the Mississippi River, and we were supposed to be at the John Deere Pavilion yesterday, and that was... It's closed, so we didn't even stop. We went right through Moline, Illinois. Hey, kids, what do you guys think about living in a house like this? They'd have a whole big family living in there. Yep, okay, let's go down. Man. Alex is excited because there's a mail truck over there. I think the mailman is bringing us some mail. Um, yeah, the Huck Finn house. Look at that little door. Could be a whole big family living in there. Huckleberry Finn house. If I can get the deal to get situated. Huckleberry Finn house. Reconstruction. Tom Blankenship was the real character. Hello, what's up boss lady, madman in the house? I know, who is this guy? We don't know, he can't see me. Oh, it, it'll be great. We're gonna walk around this town uh, today, but I haven't had internet. And it's, there's been a bunch of crazy stuff going on, but uh, yeah, we're down here in Missouri. Miss G with the kids. And then, who's this guy? <laughs> Oh, Alex, sorry, I'm spinning you guys around. Alex wants to watch the mailman. He could care less about where he's at. He is super excited. Alex likes a UPS and the mailman. Alex is up there on the step. We're going to step back over here. Let some other guests go by. Uh, 420, Randy, what's up? Big Rob, Scotty, Mac. How's it going? These graphics are great. Aiden, do you know what this building would have been? The shed. The shed? Yeah. I don't know. Probably is now, but that would have been the toilet. So the Tom Sawyer house, we're going to be going through still. But yeah, it's we're uh, it's a little Mississippi River town. The river is right over there. And a big grass deal you're seeing there is a flood wall. But pretty pretty awesome stuff. 
Zachman is here too. Nice. Yeah, so we'll fill you guys in on where we've been the last few days and what's been going on. It's been all good. It's been a little bit of stress though and craziness. Big Blue's been doing really good. Been super happy. But yeah, we uh, went through the museum here already so i didn't take you guys through there oh i'm losing my family here that's a walking tour right here you go huh oh yeah yeah Come on, kids. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what happens here with the uh, internet. So, <clears throat> what is this? The kitchen? Going through some old stuff here. I'm not sure. What are we walking into? Oh. I think this is the, the gift shop. All right, caution, step down. Sorry, we're whipping you guys around. Oh, this is the house. This is the Mark Twain house. Nice. Like his father, Twain believed that riches came from hard work. As a young man, he progressed through a variety of careers, including typesetter, steamboat pilot, silver miner, and reporter before his writing made him rich. Unfortunately, once he had made money, he fell into the common traps of poor investing and overspending. Huh. And it said that he spent most of his fortune on flight sim, and that's what did him in. <laughs> yeah, that, that he did. Not bankrupt, he bankrupt. The Orbix website took it all. <laughs> oh, he was also into iRacing. Explains it right there. All right, hopefully I haven't lost, lost you guys. <laughs> What's up with the stars on the G? I don't know, it's kind of weird, yeah. What did Twitch do? That is new. I don't know. Uh, even as he mocked high society in his lectures and books, Twain reached out for his, its trappings of success. About the time he wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, he built a home in Connecticut with 25 rooms, hot and cold running water, new finangled flush toilets, and a truly grand parlor. He did spend a lot. These doors. And flight sim. And hey, don't mess with that. Leave it alone. What's this back here? So this is the... Yeah. Oh, you can't get up there? No. Yeah, I love these staircases. I like the courtyard. My grandparents had a staircase like that. It was all windy. Yeah, you do remember it? Uh-oh. Not following the arrows. All right. Continue your Tom, your tour up the stairs. Okay. Uh, learning right from wrong. Missouri was a slave state, and Hannibal life taught Sam that slavery was acceptable. His preacher said it was God's will. His father beat their enslaved uh, African, and when uh, ten years old, ten-year-old Sam witnessed the murder of an enslaved man with a chunk of iron. No one was punished because it wasn't a crime. But Sam felt differently as he played during summers on his uncle's farm with the enslaved children and listened all evening to spirituals and stories told around the fire by Uncle Dan Daniel. That was an enslaved man uh, whose sympathies were warm and wide. He became friends with that guy. Sorry, I'm not focused on that. Apologize. Gimbal is moving on me. 
<laughs> I don't know what this star thing is. I've been like off Twitch for a few days. I'll be able to chat with you guys once we're out of this tour. We're, we're moving through here. Sorry, buddy. Stepping on my kids. Uh, Twain's views on slavery evolved as he traveled and met new people. In 1874, Twain was thunderstruck to hear the story of Mary Ann Cord, who had been enslaved, and to learn of the horrors she endured as her husband and children were ripped from her arms and sold south. He wrote her story, which was published in the Atlantic Monthly. Yup. Sure glad they uh, didn't want to tear this place down, huh? Is this the courtyard? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is the back of the house here. Neat. They're building a six million dollar flood wall out here, so that's some of the noise we hear. Oh, classy! I just missed a sub. Who done it, Nick? Thank you so much for the thirteen months. I don't have any kind of like alerts. Very nice. Thank you so much. Got the G's. The sub bus is rolling. I'll be able to. Uh, I'll be able to chat with you guys a whole lot once we walk off of this property. But there's other guests here, so I'm trying to just stick to the tour and get ourselves through here. Because we have some other things we're going to do this afternoon. Unfortunately, I can't stream because it's in a cave. And uh, we're at the campground outside of the cave and have no internet. I can guarantee you there will be none inside. So this is a boy's paradise. Sam, by the way, is the uh, Mark Twain. Um, so he was a sickly infant and his mother feared for his life. Later as an uh, energetic young boy, he taxed her patience with his exploits. Standing in front back bedroom, one can almost hear his friend, Tom Blankenship, secret cat call, inviting him to moonlit adventures. We can imagine Sam and his little brother Henry playing marbles uh, just past the, uh, sorry, playing marbles past bedtime, sneaking cats upstairs in a basket and choking down patient, uh, Patent, patient medicine at the first sign of a cough. Yeah, they had to take some bad medicine. This little bedroom over here. I might take some video, yeah. We've got some guests behind us, so I'm gonna move through here. Hannibal's gift without the steady, uh, sustainable influence of Hannibal and its colorful resident Samuel Clemens could not have fashioned himself into Mark Twain. Hannibal did not shield Sam from the realities of the 19th century America. There was illness, uh, deceit, and death. Even as there was love, forgiveness, and adventure, the call of the Mississippi River put a wandering in his soul that changed, challenged him to make his way into the world. Uh, and his mother's joyful love of stories encouraged him to express his thoughts. Samuel Clemens gained much from his boyhood home in Hannibal, and so did America. Little bedroom there. All right. Continue on through here. Come on, boys. Hold the door for your mother. How's it going? Good. We continue through here. Is this a gift shop? Uh, the gift shop here, and then you go out the door here over to Becky Thatcher house. Oh, oh yeah, nice. AC, hold the door for your mother. Hey, hold the door for your mother. Aiden is uh, getting his butt busted a lot today, so he's crabby. So this is the uh, Becker, Becky Thatcher's home. This was the girl in the stories, if you remember, that he had a big crush on. Becky Thatcher, Tom Sawyer's first sweetheart in Mark Twain's book, Tom Sawyer. Tom thought Becky to be the essence of all that is charming in, in womanhood. Oh, That's how I felt about Miss G. <laughs>
Yeah, video of it would be sick. Um, oh, I don't think I'll be doing video uh, in the cave because it's so dark. You have to use flashlights in there, but it's where the Tom Sawyer. Uh, oh, we can't forget about this. You should take a picture over here of the kids. Tom Sawyer's fence. Here stood the board fence, which Tom Sawyer persuaded his gang to pay him for the privilege of whitewashing. Tom sat by and saw that it was well done. So we should get the kids' picture over there. <laughs> what about Miss Cheese Woman? <laughs> I thought this was family friendly. <laughs> the kids are going to get their picture taken. I can't take one. What's up, Steam Master? How's it going? Yeah, it got windy out here, so hopefully you guys aren't hearing too much of that. Can you guys smile? <laughs> so there's the uh, famous fence where he uh, charmed kids into wanting to whitewash this fence. Alex, are you going to paint? Oh, so the kids can actually pick these up. Yeah, you can pick them up. And... You should get them doing that. You get their picture. This could also stand for the first time they've done actual manual labor. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We all read about this in, in in school, but you know, never actually come to see the uh, fence where it all happened. Yeah, it, it got it really windy all of a sudden. Uh, which I'm not complaining. It is really hot and muggy here today. It's like 93. And muggy. They, it's funny because the kids are like, oh my God, it's so hot here. And I'm like, yeah, me me and the wife are used to it because they're living in Tennessee. It's the typical Tennessee uh, heat. All right. Man, now I'm going to have to go read some Mark Twain, right? Yeah, we were listening to the audio book on the way down. Grant's Drugstore is part of the part of the book too we can uh so grant's drugstore in 1846 mark twain's family fell on hard times and couldn't afford to live in their own home grant uh in invited the entire clemens family to live with them in the rooms above their pharmacy they shared their roof and their food nice to allow uh, miss clemens to get uh, Mr. Clemens, sorry, uh, to get his career and finances in shape. The space was small, but their hearts were grand, and for a brief time, this house was Mark Twain's home, living upstairs there. It's awesome. J.M. Clemens, Justice of the Peace. You hear about that in the uh, story as well. Mark Twain's father's law office young sam clemens which is mark twain saw a dead man on the floor and in here one night sam went out uh what the heck sam w went out uh, at a window taking the uh, sash along with him <laughs> oh my god i didn't need the sash he recalled but it was uh handier to take it than it was to leave it so i took it wasn't exactly scared but i was uh, considerably agitated. What the heck? That is so crazy. We'll have to uh, go in there here. So this is the Becky Thatcher house. Pretty awesome. All right, folks. Sorry, I'm whipping the camera all over here. And little Alex is right behind.
Our first meeting was when Tom turned handspring in front of our home and accidentally struck me in the head. His interest to know if I had been hurt was the beginning of our acquaintance, which grew a very dear friendship, where he was uh, doing crazy stuff in front of the house to get this girl's attention. Boys don't do that. Wow, Asim, that's unbelievable. That was his crush there. That's pretty cool. And the same story told by Dr. Selfie. So Laura Hawkins was the real name of Becky Thatcher. You guys can rewatch the VOD if you want to read about this stuff. I'll probably even do that when I get home. <laughs> Growing up fast, when, when do today's kids have to grow up and stop being kids? When they're 18, after college, even later. In 1850, your childhood experience varied based on your status of life. Poor kids, especially boys, had to work for money to help their families, and enslaved children worked long hours because they had no choice. Oops, sorry about that. Kids in school, middle-class families, parents viewed childhood as a time for playing and learning, and uh, well-off families' kids could stay in school through their teens. So, th so if you had money, Aiden, and your family was well-to-do, you got to go to school, and that's what kids wanted to do. They wanted to be in school. The other alternative was what? Work, long hours. So you'd be already put to work. And you know what they didn't have back then? Mama, what didn't they have? Yeah, no Kindle, no electronics, no PC. Kids these days. Sam Clemens was 12 years old when his father died. Shortly afterward, his mother took him out of school and he was apprenticed to Joseph Clemens and in the printing trade. When setting type, the typesetter or compositor stood in front of a stand holding two trays or pieces of type. The small letters used more frequently were in the lower and closest type case, the capital letters in the upper case, hence our terms upper and lower case for capitals and small letters. The compositor would start a story with a space and invent the paragraph. Then one at a time, the letters were picked up and placed in the composing stick set for the column width. After the first word, a space would be inserted and the next word sent. The type drawers or cases had compartments for each letter of the alphabet, numbers, punctuation, anything that was to appear on the page needed a separate piece of type. Mm -hmm. Separate drawers held different sizes of type that was needed. At the end of each line, the compositor had to Not sure if you guys can hear this. Splitting the printing line. process. The decision was whether the last word exactly filled the line, if it had to be hyphenated, or if the line needed justifying by going back and placing small spaces between the words to justify the line. This process went on until the paragraph was completed. Then a new paragraph started, and the process continued until the entire story was set. The story would be taken to a large flat surface or composing stone, ready to be set into a page for the newspaper. All of the material from one page of the paper would be gathered and arranged to fill the page's space. A metal frame or chase and that, kids, is how the fake news was made. spaces used to hold the type firmly in the chase. When all the pages for the edition of the paper were ready, one page would be taken to the printing press. 
That's learning a trade. He worked as a, in a printing outfit. So you guys kind of get the... Oh, it's coming in loud and clear. Nice. And he also worked as a steamboat captain. I have my microphone flipped around towards me. It's one of the mistakes I made last year is I was so quiet. And I was like, geez, you know, my microphone was away from me. So it's a directional thing. So whatever we're looking at, like a TV like that, you guys are, the mic is facing away. That's why I didn't know if you'd hear it. So kids at school, here's today's curriculum. So they didn't have, uh, you know, homeschooling on laptops back then. <laughs> Going to school. Would you go to school if you didn't have to? In 1850, Hannibal school was not required. But most kids went, at least for a while. And there's eight in that. See, now you're sitting at one of the old desks. Yep, I can see Aiden. That would have been Aiden at school. <laughs> Try punishment 1850 style. Ooh, I like this. So when you're broken a rule, one of these would be your punishment. Write lines, go to the student's desk and write, I will obey it 100 times. Wear the dunce cap and fool's stool. Balance and look ridiculous for one hour. Then you had the block. Balance for two hours on a, standing on a block. And the switch or cane, ouch. Aren't you glad teachers don't use these anymore? Wow, I don't know. <laughs> I think they should. <laughs> the master's arm performed until it was tired and the stock of switches notably diminished. Then the order follows. Now, sir, go and sit with the girls and let this be a warning for you. So they would they would spank them. They had spanking in school even during our day. When I moved to Tennessee, uh, people that were my age said, yeah, we had it all the way through high school. I don't think it exists anymore now, but we didn't have it up north. We did have it on the school bus. And by spanking, I mean getting slugged by the bus driver was not uncommon when I was a kid. <laughs> Only to the high schoolers I saw that, but it made the, us little kids really scared. If you're Becky, home is a large, comfortable house. You have your own room and your own slave to clean it. If you're Tom, the home is a small, cramped house. You have to share a room with your brother, Sid. Jim, if you're like Jim, home is some blankets on the floor of your master's kitchen so you're ready to begin the next day's chores. And Huck, if you're like Huck, home is anywhere you find a dry place for the night. Your favorite sleeping spot is a hog, hog shed or a big empty barrel. Huckleberry came and went at his own free will. He slept on doorsteps in fine weather and in empty hog sheds in wet. So he was a homeless Huckleberry Finn. Laura Hawkins' girlhood home, Becky Thatcher's house, which is where we're in right now. The uh, earliest photo of Sam Clemens, that's, that's the house that we just came out of. And the fence right there that we stood in front of, that's that right there. And then down there we have Tom Blankenship, which was Huckleberry's, was a shack uh, that he might have lived in before he left to live on the streets. So he was uh, homeless. Tough times. Pretty neat. Wait, I didn't know if they had AC. <laughs> Aiden says, I didn't know they had AC. Yeah, that was uh, installed later. These houses would have been hotter than outside. Oh, okay. uh, All right, I'm gonna come out, exit out here. Yep, Hold the door for your mother. Oh. Pretty cool. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, you could have tried, but you'd probably only try it once. <laughs> yeah, stars are for the sub tiers. It could be. Could be. Oh, we got an interactive thing here. 
John Clemens and Slavery. All right, kids beat me to it. John Marshall Clemens grew up with slaves in the household. That's when the Clemens Tom, family moved to Missouri uh, in 1845, they had a female slave named Jenny. In Hannibal, Jenny reportedly offended Jane Clemens, who summoned her husband home to punish her with a beating. Even though Hannibal was a slaveholding community, attempts to free slaves were feared and abolitionists were scorned. In 1841, three men, Work, Thompson, and Burr, tried to convince five slaves to run away. They were caught. Clemens sat on the special jury that sentenced the men to 12 years in the state penitentiary. Slaves were bought and sold locally. Remembering shackled slaves awaiting shipment downriver to harsher conditions, Sam Clemens recalled, They were the saddest faces I had ever seen. After selling Jenny, Clemens rented a young houseboy. Slaves could be rented by the year less expensively than buying them. Mark Twain wrote in his autobiography, In my schoolboy days, I had no aversion to slavery. I was not aware that there was anything wrong about it. No one arraigned it in my hearing. The local papers said nothing against it. The local pulpit taught us that God approved it, that it was a holy thing, and that the doubter need only look in the Bible if he wished to settle his mind. On two occasions, slaves were brought before Judge Clement. One was charged with brandishing a knife, the other with insolence. In both cases, Clemens ordered punishment in the form of a lashing. Young Sam Clemens, the future Mark Twain, traveled extensively and observed racism in many forms. His stance changed and he began to address the wrongness of slavery. He summed up, Slavery was a bold, grotesque, and unwarranted usurpation. Mark Twain's memories of slavery and Hannibal were a motivating force in his anti-racism stance in Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Oh, it is hot out here. His dad was Justice of the Peace. I don't know if I'm going to stand here for the whole thing. It's pretty, pretty hot here. <laughs> Standing out here in the sun. Come on. It is. The Justice of the Peace played a major role Basically, in the this is explaining what his father did. Settling disputes brought order to the community. All right, boss lady, thanks for coming to hang out. John Marshall Clemens Court covers two years of his court session. These were held every few months as cases piled up. All right, we're going to head in there, folks, because we do got a lot to, to do today. Oh, which one's open? Which one do you go through? Where's mom? Oh, she's back here. Let's go through here. Yeah, we got a lot to do today. We're going to do a little walking around here. Well, we didn't even go into this place. I don't know if you can, it might be locked up. Yeah. The charges related to assault and battery came before John Clemens. Oh, it's court. over here. Those found guilty were off. Checking if there is a battery. I think these are all locked up. All right. Not all citizens accepted slavery. However, slavery was the accepted practice in Hannibal. So yeah, there was a lot of slave stuff in this town. I don't know if you can get in here. We'll go walk along the river and do some chatting here. What is up, nonstop? How you doing? This is a restored drugstore. This is an old-fashioned Walgreens. Go down. Life in the 19th century. They had all their bitters and tonics. It's like Red Dead. Syrup and balsam. 
So living above a pharmacy in the 19th century must have been fascinating for the curious and clever Sam Clemens. Though he never poked fun at Dr. Grant in his writing, Sam certainly had a very specific opinion of the medical profession. They could not hide it from themselves that every time they emptied a fresh drug store into him, he, <laughs> into him, he got worse. How the chimney sweep got the ear of the emperor. Okay. Yeah, they used to have to take some nasty stuff. Ah, uh, learn an engine room, nice. Yeah, man, up it's not that hot out. It's pretty, it's pretty warm out, standing in the sun. Pharmacy in the community. Perched on the hill of, uh, perched on the corner of Hill and Main, Grant's Drug Store was a beacon of help in Hannibal. It offered the latest medicines from back east and time-tested herbal remedies blended by Dr. Grant's own hands. In a time of fear before germ theory was accepted, and the importance of hand washing was understood, the benefits of a calm, caring voice cannot be overstated. Dr. Grant could not offer his patients antibiotics or effective heart medicine or any of the cancer or any type of cancer treatment, but he could offer counsel, a listening ear, and the best medicine of all, hope. <laughs> what is this? The wheel of misfortune, oh my God. It's like our wheel. You guys want to spin the wheel? So what do you got? Spin it. All right, let's see what Aiden's going to have. Oh, typhoid. What is this? Your water... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me read it. Stop. We're trying to read that. Your water supply gets contaminated during a flood. You catch typhoid and die. Age 31. All right, somebody else give it a spin, not Aiden. Ashton... Oh no, fire, wind rushes down your chimney, setting your house on fire. You die trying to save your children, age 36. Oh geez. Okay, Austin. Oh, oh man, he's, he's really going at it. Weakness? You were uh, born and small and sickly. One day you die quietly. Oh, age two. Two months. Okay. This one's Alex? Yeah. This is morbid. Poisoning? Your doctor prescribes uh, calamel for your cough. Most of your teeth fall out, age 14. Unbelievable. All right, I'm gonna give one here. Let's see what my fate is. Milling accident, you're killed. <laughs> In an accident at Hannibal's Lumber Mill, age 28. Yeah, I bet chat would ag probably agree with that. I died in a, in a milling accident. <laughs> that rule is, wheel is brutal. The wheel of misfortune. Uh, Mama, you should give it a... Give it a spin, maybe you'll become the winner, because we all died. Ah, so oh, you died in the fire. <laughs> well, our family is doomed. You need to update your wheel, yes, I know. That, that, that wheel is worse than our wheel. Mississippi River. 1849 Hannibal was particularly ravaged by Caloria. It began in December of 48. Chloria arrived in New York City and New Orleans from boats in Europe. It quickly spread throughout the country through stagecoach, wagon trains, railroad, and Mississippi River. Wow. Even Tennessee was affected, V-Dub. Okay, there's a lot of, man, this is making my ears bleed. Where do we go upstairs? Stop. Okay, I gotta get out of this room. I'm going deaf. Going up to the second floor and Mark Twain lived up here. Come on, kids. Like I said, we'll have a good chat once we leave here, folks. I'm just trying to get through this and 
So there's lots of rooms. There's another floor up there. And they, his family lived up here. Boys, come in here. You're not following the directions. Talk here with patients. Dr. Grant was a fine physician as a town like Hannibal could not uh, want in the night. To, <clears throat> let me just try to read to get closer here. Dr. Grant was as fine a physician as a town like Hannibal could want in the 19th century. He could offer counsel, a listening ear, best medicine of all hope. Pretty much what we read downstairs. Um, after seeing patients all day, perhaps even riding out to distant farms to visit the weakness, the weakest and the oldest, Dr. Grant would have returned to an apartment filled with nine people, three of them boys under the age 12. So then they lived up here. Tight quarters. Imagine the frustrations of nine people inhibiting this tiny space without a bathroom, air conditioning, or running water. Imagine the generosity of Dr. Uh, and Miss Grant, who opened their door to neighbors in need. So they lived up here, the doctor did, and he invited that family. There was nine people living up here without electricity, air conditioning that didn't exist. And, uh, you know, no, no power and stuff like that. Can you guys imagine living up here? That's a 24-hour stream chair right there. You guys know what that is? That's a toilet. You lift the cover off, you do your business, do the chair, and then put the thing on and go empty it out. You should get that for the camper. Doing some window work there. Sam loved secrets and forgotten doors are the perfect places to discover them. Imagine you are uh, Sam and peek around the corner. What kind of secrets do you see? Once Sam listened as Dr. Peek and Miss McFarland recalled the tragic fire of 1811 at the Richmond Theater. Several years later, he recounted all the details as a volunteer subject in a visiting memoirist show. Dr. Peek was shocked and believed that Sam was truly mesmerized. Interesting. I was wanting to know what the guns were all about. Death came and set him free. But yeah, we're pretty much through this tour. Yeah, you guys want to go back and see those guns? I was looking for the history there, but I don't see anything. Oh, so we haven't had lunch yet, so it's getting super hungry. The only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want, drink what you don't like, and do what you'd rather not. Oh boy, I think my family all left me. They're not here anymore. Okay, well, I think that's the end of that too. We're gonna do some walking around the city here. Hopefully my kids learn something. I do not know where they are. I lost my family. I knew they were gone too, because it got really quiet in here. Well, I do not see them anywhere.
Oh, I'm gonna go and look around. I don't know where they went. Yeah, they're doing some work in this building, so it's kind of hard to get through. Oh, we went out there by the pharmacy. Yeah, okay. That's where I'm going. I have to communicate through Twitch here. They had this door blocked a minute ago because there's workers out here doing some stuff. Uh, well, there you guys are. Oh, we did? Uh-oh. We got a stinky. <laughs> yeah, when you have one using their diaper in there, it's, uh, and you're in a public place, you usually uh, head for the door. So, do you need to go change them? Yeah, we'll go walk over there and then we'll head out do a little walking around we got to head back so we can uh, take the cave tour so there's two caves uh, Mark Twain's book talks about and uh, pretty awesome for those of you that have joined in late the Mark Twain the fence the famous fence that was whitewashed that's that fence up there in the house that he lived in the character so that's what that's all about there Yeah, we can walk, walk. Oh, yeah, let's. We didn't walk through there. Yep. Yep. We'll go up here. Sorry for whipping you guys around like that. Making everybody sick. We'll be through here in just a minute. Mark Twain, Remembrance of an American Past. Like all of us, Mark Twain told stories about his childhood in order to understand who he had become as an adult. In this house, Sam Clemens lived a pretty typical life for a small town American boy in the 1850s. Yet his life here helped shape him into Mark Twain, one of the greatest writers in the world. That's the writer. As a writer in the 1870s, Mark Twain returned to this house in his memory. He used his imagination to turn the people, places, and events of his childhood into stories that captured the soul of America. And the man, uh, Mark Twain, walked back into this house on a visit to Hannibal after he was world famous. Memories of his boyhood days filled him with both, both pleasures and regret. Sorry there. Gimbal was falling here. But yeah, this is that house. So... If you guys read, you know, Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn and all that, it's all, all here is where it happened. Like I said, that all took place there. It's cool that y'all, it's cool that all that history is still there. Glad no one, yeah, well, no one got mad and smashed it. So they, he became world famous and I think this was set to be demolished in 1910 and somebody, uh, had the money and they paid to have it saved and uh then they did a big dedication ceremony here and there there was a museum there's a really nice museum there i did not stream in there but uh it gives you a really just a story from his birth his uh, brother died at age 10 from measles and uh all the way through his life their first child died at age of two Mark Twain brewing, huh? Do you think Mama will find us? Yeah, there's an alien flag up there. Yep, Irish. So, and then we started we started streaming today when we were going through that that house there. That was the um, Huckleberry Finn's house. Let's not walk through there. Uh, let's go down over here. I'm trying to get to this park across here. So anyway, yeah, we, uh, we've had a pretty good, um, hey, holy cow, Ethor, tier three coming in four to five months. How you doing, Ethor? How is she going? Thank you so much. Sub bus is rolling. Thank you guys for getting those up for me. Um, we've had a crazy couple of days. Uh, it's been good, stressful, but good. We've been learning a lot of lessons, uh, taking away some things as we kind of prepare 
a little bit for this year, but uh, for the next you know few years of all the traveling that we hope to be able to start doing. And so uh, this trip had some big challenges with trying to basically we left home without like any idea where we we're going what we were doing where we we're staying and uh it got to be about dinner time the first night we didn't get out of home until four o'clock in the afternoon about seven o'clock we stopped to eat and mark twain memorial lighthouse oh man we're gonna have to walk over there i'm gonna head up here we're gonna go up there's a lighthouse up there i want to go up and check that out um but anyway, we ended up, we ended up, uh, <laughs> all the campgrounds Friday night were full. Uh, a little bit frustrating because, you know, we kind of expected that, but the places that we were calling were not picking up their phones. And a lot of times they have uh, em empty spots, even if it's just a park. And, but we didn't want to go out of, out of town to drive to get in and then have to turn around because they were full and drive out. So we ended up boondocking in a Walmart parking lot in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and it was pretty hot. Um, but we slept okay. Um, didn't like the town. It was kind of shocked by how, I don't say it was dirty, but there was a lot of weird people running around. As soon as we pulled up, within minutes, we had somebody coming over asking us uh, for money. I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. So I didn't sleep very well because I was, you know, was not really liking what we were saying. Um, but we got up early at 5.30 in the morning, and got ready and hit the road early. And I uh, got down to Clinton, Iowa last night and uh, we were so damn tired. Two nights ago, sorry. So damn tired, I just, I couldn't stream. I was, because I hadn't slept really the night before. So, yeah, DJ, nice, 24 months, thank you so much. DJ in the house. Oh, how we doing? Um, so yeah, we basically, I don't know. It just, it just didn't work uh, with streaming. I intended to, I had great internet. And then we got a storm that night. It rained, which wasn't a big deal. We went out, got some groceries, slept. That was Saturday night, and then we got up early and said, we're going to get the hell out of Dodge. Well, we realized Saturday night that, uh, there's the police, uh, Saturday night we realized that the John Deere Museum was completely closed. Now, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago it was not closed. I checked, and they allowed you to go in there, but they would not allow kids to climb on the equipment, but you could still walk through. And the state of Illinois looks like with the COVID stuff getting bigger there. Hey! Miss G is walking away. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry yelling everybody in the ear. <laughs> Apologize. She was about to walk through that door over there. And I was like, we'll never see her again. I didn't want to have to go run after her. It's pretty hot out. 93 today and very humid. Um, so, yeah, we ended up... Uh, then, then we left yesterday, we drove to Illinois, and we could not get, uh, we couldn't find diesel fuel, like, any, all the stations were, like, so tight, I couldn't get in anywhere. I was getting really frustrated, and I can see a double-sized tank coming, 35-gallon now, and with 60-gallon diesel tank on that truck is, like, $500 to do it. I've seen a lot of YouTubers that do that, who RV full-time, and I'm going to definitely uh, look into that, because... I'd like to be able to fill up and go a hell of a long way. Um, hey, Alex, where's your hat? Woo! All right, we're going to a lighthouse. It's kind of noisy here. So uh, anyway, that's what uh, that's what happened. And we got down here last night. And I'm thinking, finally, I'm not super tired. It was st stressed, but we had. We made a reservations now for the rest of this trip and I've kind of learned, you know, I just, I need to have a couple of days res reserved ahead so that I don't have the stress of where the hell are we going tonight. When it gets this hot, I want to have a place to plug in. Um, I'm also going to be buying a generator, bigger one. We have one, but I left the generator at home because I didn't want to have to worry about somebody stealing it and it's not big enough to run the AC. Whew. 
That was a workout. So, I'll walk up here. Be Becky's butterflies. We're gonna walk up and have a nice view. Whew. Truck stop, I would stay in a truck stop before Walmart, preferably in the future. Um, because you can run a generator there and uh, nobody's going to complain about it. Full river view there. Careful. Yeah, don't die. Sorry if I'm over breathing. <laughs> What's up there, Chucky? Well, I got a shower. You got shower credits at Pilot. <laughs> I need a couple. Ethor is always trying to get me to shower with them. It's so weird. I mean, it's awfully nice, but I don't shower with dudes. Um, we'll go over and read about this. The Mark Twain Memorial Bridge. There you go. There's some reading for you. You guys can read that. So. I think we're gonna be getting some mowing going on here. Oh, he's just running around. Uh... Yeah, so we just learned a few few things on this trip. I also, uh, so yesterday we were driving through Illinois. I couldn't even hardly find a place to pull over. We were on all these river road highways. There wasn't even parking lots along the way that we could pull over to take a break. So I was hungry and thirsty when we left, but I just wanted to get on the road and I figured we'd stop at a rest area there never was one so we did the whole four or five hours of driving yesterday no food no just it was just terrible so yeah last night we finally get to where we're going had something to eat and a little bit stressed out and i was like okay well see about streaming or something and then go and check we have no internet no cell service it's like oh my god and we're not staying that far away whoops we're not staying that far away um from from this place but from where we are now from the town but there's just we're in a hollow so yeah that's the uh, mississippi river and illinois on the other side not too bad hope you're doing well i picked me up a new set of wheels Ooh, nice oh Yo, you're in the new truck club too nice what'd you pick up only rest area in illinois is on the toll roads yeah i know and the diesel, we had to stop to get diesel at this one place and it was like out in the middle of a parking lot in a mud hole. It was like I had to stand in water to fill. And let me tell you what, as a diesel owner now, my God, anywhere that trucks use, those pumps are so bad. It looked like the one I used had been dropped in the mud. We're, we're going to continue up here. We're doing snacks and stuff. So, yeah, it's it's... It's been an interesting week um, owning that truck. Uh, the truck, by the way, folks, I my face is hurt from all the grinning from ear to ear. It's, oh my God, look at this. I might be huffing and puffing a bit. It's really humid here, so it's hard to breathe anyway. But yeah, being a diesel owner has been great. Uh, the truck pulls my camper like it's a joke. Um, I've been doing like 65, 70, 75 down the road. And that power stroke just is like, yeah, boss, what you got? So Big Blue's been doing pretty good. It's actually relaxing to drive now instead of white knuckle and stressful. All right, I'm not in that great of shape. Wow. Here comes my kids. My gimbal's going retarded. There's the city down there. It feels really nice. Were your kids more excited about the truck than you? Talking about and playing in the bed? Yeah. My uh, kids, they, they like it a lot. They do. I'll give you guys a little glimpse of the truck when we get back there. Okay. <sighs> I'm not going to do that. Lots of st oh my god, there's more. Watch out for traffic. Jesus. 
Holy crap. Ashton's ahead of me. Miss G wanted to get exercise. We're getting it. Oh my God. <laughs> there's, there's even more. Oh jeez. Hey, you can drive up here? What the frick? I want my money back. Adopt a book. Cool. <gasps> no. Oh, God, I'm sick. I'm trying not to puke. 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 Oh my God. There's somebody inside of it. I wonder if they feel sick. Oh. The Prius. Guys, there's a Prius over there. Oh. Oh, I'm doing it guys. My heart is pumping. It hasn't beat this heart since the last time I flew the Mustang A2A. Holy buckets. A lot of hours of farm sim right there got me out of shape. Okay. Oh Miss G, she didn't know. Oh God, there's a Prius. Oh my God, Woo! we did her bud. Oh yeah, I think I'll sit right here. Wish I would have brought water. <laughs> I, I'm not in bad shape, but the view up here is amazing by the way. The kids are, so Ashton won. I got in second place. Austin's in third. Let's see who gets fourth. I think Mama and Alex will beat Aiden. Aiden's been a crabby little butthole. Alex is in the lead. Alex is in the lead? Yeah, Aiden's still coming here. Pop a seat. Yeah. Oh, here comes somebody. I wish I went to smoke all them cigarettes earlier this morning. I had two packs before we came. I'm just kidding. Oh, Alex got fourth. Mama got fifth. Aiden got sixth place. How you doing, man? Are you glad we didn't stay living in Tennessee? No. <laughs> He's like, it's so hot here. I'm like, we when we got here yesterday, we were like, we we're like, yeah, this this is amazing because like feels just like Tennessee. We'll take a look at this here in a minute, but a nice view. Are you hot? You're not gonna fall off. It, the breeze feels good. You wanted to get exercise, right? Yeah. <laughs> Baseball homer two packs. <laughs> Who has a Glock shirt? What? My camera's already dead. All right, time to start driving to Gary. Talk to you all later. Ethor, thanks again. Have yourself a good drive to Gary. I wish we could see some nice barges. Again, that's the Mississippi River. Um, we're on the Missouri side, and that side over there is Illinois. Uh, not far from Quincy. In fact, we'll see Quincy, Illinois to our left when I decide to stand up. I gotta get back to work. Uh, also, we'll try and check the VOD later. Have fun, all right? Chucky, have a good one. We'll read about this. Mark Twain Memorial Lighthouse. Built in 1935 as a memorial 
to Mark Twain on his 100th birthday. The current lighthouse is in the second to be built at what? The current lighthouse is the second to be built at this. Oh, okay. Okay, so they had a different one. A lighthouse replica was displayed during a parade celebrating Mark Twain's centennial. So he, he became world famous. 1960, a windstorm with 70 miles per hour winds demolished the structure. In 1960, it tore it right down. Stone steps with an iron railing were constructed from the bottom of the rock quarry below the lighthouse to the top of the hill. Hmm. This photo was taken in 63. Shows the Mark Twain Memorial Bridge approach top the rocky incline above the structure. It's 54 feet tall, 200 feet above the Mississippi, and 244 steps from the statue to the lighthouse. Wow. The lighthouse was rebuilt this time with wood and cedar shingles. A rededication with President John F. Kennedy lighting the beacon. Girl and Boy Scouts lined the steps with candles and the flame passed from scout to scout up the hill. That is so cool. So President Kennedy actually dedicated this. Looks like they've got some dozer work going on over there. There's a barge down there. I was hoping to see a bunch of barges. Hey, Ascended, how you doing? I don't know what they're doing, they're digging up some rocks, putting some rocks down. Then the town of Hannibal, Missouri, which is where we just were, all the way down there. And we could have drove up here, you know that? Aiden looked at me like, are you serious? <laughs> what? What's that? There's a what? Oh, there is, isn't there? <laughs> My boy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Green Day, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good view. Pre nice little, nice little city. And then the lighthouse. What do they got like a walking path over there? Looks like you can walk along the river or something. Let's check it out a little bit. We'll turn around and head back down. Aiden looks like he's gonna die. I don't know where this goes. If I'd have brought like water and stuff, I would have probably go for more of a walk. Oh, what is this? Huh. It's uh bizarre. Spot that it's two parking spots. Huh. It's a road coming in. Do new under 24 hour surveillance. Y'all like them flowers. So anyway, I hope the video and the audio is not too bad. The RV museum is uh, open back up nice. I'm probably gonna stop by there in September or August. So. I don't know if I said anything to everybody on the stream or not, but we're planning on doing a three week to Tennessee, Alabama and Florida at the end of August. And there's a nice view. That's Memorial Lighthouse for Mark Twain. I bet the view is really awesome up there. You can't get up, up there. So anyway, we're planning on heading south in a few months. There's like a whole hillside of those orange flowers. I don't know what they are though. This is all lit up at night. A lot of folks up here now, so we're gonna head back down. 
All right, go down carefully, bud. Yeah, we, we got like a mile or two to walk back to our truck where I parked. Yeah, we're not gonna be to the truck anytime soon. A lot of folks coming up here now. Good day for a climb, huh? Well, we're gonna see. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty up there. I know, you want to be keen because I have a heart attack doing this. Yeah. got a way home now. <laughs> <laughs> A couple there, they look like, oh shit. This don't look good. This don't look good. The guy's wife was asking for the keys and he's turned around after I walked by and said, I know why he's wanting the keys. You think I'm gonna die of a heart attack and you, you wanna have a ride home. Yeah? Oh, don't run, bud. Whoa. Austin almost ate the concrete right there. Going down is not as bad as going up, but your feet are still like ripping through the fronts of your shoes. Sometimes I like going up more than down. That's my thought for the day. Some of them purta flowers. Kind of. Yeah, did you have a fun climb here? What? Did you have a fun climb? Yeah, but think of how in shape you are now. Yeah, we haven't eaten much on this trip. We've been going, going, going. Be fun to step on the scale when I get home. So tomorrow we're heading back to Wisconsin, very southern point part of it, to a campground for two days. And then we're heading home for a night to do some laundry. And then I'm turning and burning and heading north to the family property up there my in-laws are coming to bring in a small camper that they're borrowing from my brother-in-law and we're going to have a weekend up at my dad's place and dad's bringing the skid steer up we're going to be doing some mowing property stuff i got some trees to cut out of the trail so i'll have the six by six out working and uh you know just hang out there for the memorial weekend sunday night i don't know about the stream either because we get back home Sunday night and my sister, nephew, and brother-in-law from Tennessee are going to be up to spend like four days. I think they're going to be with us through Thursday or Friday. So seeing as they'll just be getting there about the time I should be going live, I haven't seen her in several years. I don't think that's going to work. So probably just stream throughout the week as I can. Uh, Monday, my truck goes in for a six-hour appointment to get a whole bunch of stuff done. We're getting the tunnel cover, the bed sprayed, windows tinted, and a little short stubby antenna put on it so that it's not hitting the garage door. Since the truck is almost seven feet tall and the antenna sticks up to about eight feet, it hits the garage door. You guys, uh... okay, we're going. Car waiting for us, oh. It is hot. So we got a busy like two weeks or a week and a half, two weeks. My life won't be back to normal for like, yeah, almost two weeks from now. But uh, July I'll be putting down the stream time pretty heavy. July will be uh, staying closer to home. We'll be going to Michigan in July and end of July. And uh, northern Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota maybe. Um, don't know about the Minnesota thing. We'll probably do that later in the fall, but... And then in August is when we head way south, as in going down to Florida south. August, September, we'll be down there. So, hoping we have all the bugs ironed out and everything figured out by then. I'm going to hang out underneath this nice tree. Yeah, we did get a new truck a uh, week ago to be a week a week tomorrow so i haven't even had it a full week yet we've put uh 600 miles on it yeah we took off from left mama behind she has alex
it'll be nice when he's a lot bigger to be able to go a lot more. Um, Aiden? Yeah. Now, I was going to have you stay here and tell her we went to the truck. I was going to do a little truck tour. It's going to be hotter than hell in that parking lot, so I won't be spending much time outside there. But, yeah, so um, did did end up getting a new truck last week. Put 600 miles on it already. Suburban sold the next morning. The lady I saw driving it um, ended up buying it the next morning. So she she loved the truck. She was looking for something model year n newer. But everything that she had seen was a lot higher miles. So when she saw our truck, it was like a no-brainer and she was all over it. So... Suburban was sold, and it's out of our life. I love it. I loved it, though. It was a good truck. We've seen some really cool things when we got into Clinton, Iowa yesterday. Again, I was just so beat tired, and I had planned on going out, but between my tiredness and the storm that we got, I didn't get a chance, but there was a Mustang rally going on in the whole town. There was like a 1,000 Ford Mustang cars ripping around, burning out and everything else. It was really neat. Come here, Austin. Here comes Alex. He is running. He sees Dad. Dad! What kind of truck did we get? We bought a uh, 2017. I was looking for like, I, didn't, I like to stay like within two years, but uh, this, this is obviously three years, uh, 2017, that uh, had 21,000 miles, so only 21,000 miles, uh, Ford F-350 with the Power Stroke diesel in it. So we jumped up, jumped up into the uh, Power Stroke. You good? Alex, you did pretty good, buddy. Yeah, did you get, are you hot? Oh, your head is so hot. I had to stop and put sunscreen on him. More sunscreen? Woo! <laughs> you guys came down the stairs and I saw him just giving it, running down the uh, sidewalk. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow's going to be interesting too because they're talking a lot of storms. Which is going to suck trying to get packed up and out of here but I guess it's nice that it's nice out today it's a general store I'm gonna see if I can fix my camera here ah here's some river barges there's a trolley that gets around the town here. Just a really neat little town. Oops, sorry about the... Another strike. I'm surprised he hasn't popped in here today. Did you bring water for the kids and stuff? Is it in the truck or? It's in the bag. Oh. Oh, they already drank it all? I refilled it so much. So I'm pretty SOL until we get back, huh? I haven't seen one of them cars in a while. Blue eyes, what's happening? Give you guys a little view out here. It's a lot of neat little places to eat. A lot of birds. Where are you filming? We're in Hannibal, Missouri. Not too far from Tennessee, right? Oh my God, it's a, it's a Prius. Oh, I feel sick. 
Oh. Oh. Giving her a full send there. Oh God. I hope that Prius stays parked. Oh, it's got chrome on the doors. If it couldn't get any more ugly, it just did. Oh, jeez. Yeah, in Hannibal, Missouri, at Mark Twain Boyhood Home. Yeah, you can check the VOD and uh, go back and see the fence that was whitewashed and we walked through the house. Only thing I didn't go through with y'all was the uh, museum. Did not walk through the museum. Oh, I wanted to show you guys these walls here. I'll probably get the truck started for the kids because everyone's hot. We're going back to a big blue right now. Um, yeah, we parked right over here. There it is. These walls over here are like the coolest thing because you can see the big berm here. They, uh, these are the flood walls and they have steel gates that they drop in there. I'll walk over to them here in a few minutes. We'll head back to head back to the truck. Um, once we leave here, I'll be stopping the stream because we're going to go back to the camp where I'd continue to stream, but we're not going to have internet. We lose it. It goes bye-bye. But I haven't got to show the truck yet because I was going to do it at home. We didn't have time. We are getting ready, and I figured along the way we would get it in the campground and... Then when I finally had time, we don't have we didn't have internet. But yeah, here's Big Blue. And this pavement in this parking lot's radiating the heat, so my legs are on fire. But uh, it's all dirty now. We've been going through some dirty campgrounds. Jump in, start it up for them. I'll have to do a proper. Tour. So yeah, we're going to get the windows tinted. That's something that's drove me crazy the last couple days we've been driving. is like, I don't know how people drive vehicles without tinted windows. Holy Christ, is it hot in here. She is warm. Yeah, we rolled her over 22,000. It's got to be like 180 degrees in here. But uh, it's got cooled seats and all that. So that's really nice. It feels like uh, you piss yourself, but... Oh, this thing is so hot. It's hot in there. It is hot. <laughs> it's like super hot. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a little more cozy than Suburban, but actually, we, we all have more leg room. In the Suburban, you know, you got three rows of seats, which you had more shoulder room because you weren't sitting right next to somebody, but you had uh your legs or were cramped even at me and this truck has just got so much room i can like stretch out almost in here so you gain some lengthwise lose you don't really lose it width wise there's actually more but beings that we're all sitting next to each other but yeah it's a dirty truck now because it's been hitting the highway campground stuff like that uh, tonneau cover, we're getting a good aluminum the roll up that's like leather, but it can't be broken into very easy. Can't be cut through. And we're getting the bed sprayed on, on a week from today. Six hour appointment to get a bunch of stuff done to it. So it'll be going in to get all that stuff done. But yeah, we've been enjoying it. I mean, it, it towed, towed our uh, camper like it was a joke. And that was even full water and stuff like that. If I can get the camera to cooperate here. The best part about the truck to me, is, well, besides the, the engine, is, is that suspension. Because I was getting so sick and tired of having the, the squat that the other one had. But someone had a good time with that red car parked next to you. <laughs> I know. I've seen a lot of them like that down here. But yeah, it's it's decent. We've been happy with it. I'll get it back home and get it cleaned up. I'm gonna show the uh, 
flood walls here because I thought they were pretty cool. So this town had a huge flood. It got wiped out pretty good in 1972, they said. And uh, they didn't get the flood wall built till 93. Um, and they're getting another $6 million wall built currently. Um, just because, you know, there's been more flooding. They said last year the flood wall went up, I think, in April or something. And it did not come down until August. It stayed up because... There was so much flooding on the Mississippi last year. And this is the, uh, the wall that I'm talking about. And they put some big steel doors in here. I've seen a lot of trains going by. It's crazy, earlier today this playground was full of kids. Yeah, they're doing a lot of work out here. The riverboat stuff is out here. Another one down there. But they just dropped the walls in and they blocked this whole thing off to protect from uh, flooding. And you can see the flood stage. 10 feet is at the ground. 19 feet is all the way at the top. And last year they were sandbagging three feet on top of this because they thought it was gonna come over the wall. So they sandbagged three feet on top of that. So you can imagine the amount of water. It's insane. Yeah, they got those in Kentucky where you were born, yeah. Well, folks, I'm going to run back to the truck. We haven't had lunch. We're going to go back to get lunch, and then we're taking a cave tour. Uh, for us, it's pretty nice because we don't have to drive. We're staying at the campground where the cave tour is. So we're going to go back, park the truck, and uh, eat lunch in the nice air-conditioned camper and head over to the cave tour, which, like I said, there'll be, there is no Internet outside of the cave where we're staying, so I guarantee you there is nothing inside. But does anybody have any other questions, comments, or concerns before we take off? Big Blue. I've really in enjoyed the hell out of this truck. Like, it's uh, exceeded our expectations quite a bit. Is it cool in here yet? No. Oh. A lot of features in this thing. Push on max AC. It's gonna get loud up in here. Um, yeah, one of the several things have surprised us with this truck, and uh, one of them is like the sound in here. I'm not talking about just the stereo. Like inside this truck is so much quieter when you're driving than our Suburban. We heard so much wind noise. Uh, and, and even like when we're back up, like, you know, I'll be yelling at her or vice versa and we can't hear each other outside the truck. Suburban, you could talk through. The doors and windows closed. But a um, lot of nice options with the towing. Look at that, I can even flip the kilometers when we're going through Canada. Huh? Yeah, I've been averaging around 12 and a half. I've been a little bit on it though. Just some of those things in, in the, my view. You got all your trip stuff. I love all the, all the uh, truck info is pretty good. can go through. The uh, towing is awesome. So I've actually got, let's see, towing information. There's no active trailer. Let's see if we can select trailer. See, I got Togi in there. That's the name of our RV that me and the kids named last year. 
So I got Togi in there and it's all set up so it like me memorizes and it also tracks like the miles and everything, which is really nice. Um, yeah, we've been doing, and that's the thing is we've been traveling a lot of river roads and uh, you're constantly hitting the brakes, going down the hill, which having a diesel and having the engine brake is amazing. Uh, this trip has let us test what this will be like in the mountains because we want to hit like the Rockies next year. And uh, that's going to be it. Th this has been a great test because I know we've not been in the mountains, but we've we've climbed and descended down some really, really crazy uh, hills. And see, so I don't have any active trailer. Off-road status is pretty nice. It lets you... Uh, see like how the truck's sitting level or whatever and that's really nice too when you're trying to get into a camping spot and then you've got your four-wheel drive indication like i'll put it in four high locks everything in and it lets you know if your hubs are locked and all that sort of thing four low shifting her back into two but um there's a lot of a lot of things it does when you set your cruise control just like in the trucking i always like always wanted to have this in a vehicle um when you set your cruise control in this truck let's see back out of there the cruise control pops down there in the bottom where it says set and it actually tells you the mile per hour i know a lot of vehicles do that our suburban did not and uh, this will tell you so you can set it to the exact mile per hour that you want and um you know lets you know kind of what's going on there so uh, there's just a ton of other features and stuff that they've put on this truck um, it's just unbelievable it's exceeded our expectations in many many ways but anyway yeah the flood walls go in several times a year by the way lots of water comes down that river yeah that is exactly right that's what the guy said he said that they're um there's a horrible view they, he said that they put them in several times a year. I got my navigator. <laughs> Another one over there. Yeah, we got our big stupid temporary license plate in the back window. We got to wait two months to get our plates from the state of Wisconsin. They're like a commercial type. Not a commercial, but... They're 10,000 pound plus plate, so. But anywho, um, yeah, it's an F-350, yep. Yep, we ended up picking it up a week, it'll be a week ago tomorrow, Tuesday of last week, so. Uh, like I said, it's going in for accessories a week from today. I could have done it this week, but we're gone camping, so, but. Oh, tinted windows, I can't wait freaking sun shines in it's so hot um yep so we, we've been happy the old suburban went down the road and uh it's been very 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 nice being in this truck to to tow with so we'll be able to travel around the country now but um anyway folks it's been great i hope everybody enjoyed their little tour today and sorry i didn't get to live stream from john deere headquarters like originally planned they in the last two weeks, they've fully closed it down. They're not open, can't go in. I know they've got a few things parked outside, but it wasn't worth taking the trip into downtown uh, Moline, Illinois there. Uh, spending a night there and going in there when we can't even you know, go into the museum. So just didn't see a point in that. I had to take my car into the shop today. It wasn't uh, for voluntary purposes. I can't wait to see the, oh no, price tag. Yeah, there's always next time. We'll have to stop in there again. But COVID's got the place shut down, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't any points going in there. Y'all have fun, all right. Uh, yep, yep, Miss G's over there. We had some navigating issues yesterday, didn't we? To say the least, say as he found out last night that the road that he wanted me to turn on to was actually not connected to the interstate that we were on. So yeah. a lot of the troubles came from that guy that didn't know it. Who, me? Yes. yes. What? The road that you wanted us to turn down wasn't actually a road that was connected. 
Yeah, well, it, it, there's a very nice navigation system in here, and as much as I don't like the one in trucking, you know, with the talking, this one is, is pretty good. Um, it's not trying to be stupid like, like the other one, but yeah, we ended up having some, uh, we get in Moline, Illinois, we got lost. Not really lost, but we went down the wrong road a few times. is isn't a big deal when you're not towing a camper, but when you tow a camper, one of the roads we went down was a dead end, so I had to like back out of there. It was, it kind of sucked. So, but uh, the end is here. Yep, we're gonna go back, get lunch, and get in that cave, right? Just enough time. All right, folks, well, thank you so much for uh, everybody that come out. I don't have any kind of list for those that, um, that subbed and stuff today. I know we had a couple of folks, so thank you so much. I, I'm assuming I'll be able to do some uh, streaming in the campground that we're going to be at in Wisconsin. Uh, won't get there till late tomorrow, so we won't be there till really t Wednesday. Wednesday's the day we're going to be running around there, and Thursday we're heading home. So Wednesday I might be able to get a stream, but there's no idea. Um, this trip was supposed to be a two-week trip. And uh, it's, we did the whole distance I was going to do in two weeks, we were doing in like six. So, uh, FCM Junkie, thank you so much. So, it, it, but the truck thing had to happen. And uh, I can tell you right now, if it, we wouldn't have got this truck, this trip would have been, I would have never made it this far and it would have been a nightmare. So, it's, um, it's been awesome. But, all right, let's go back, get some food. Hey, bye, Ashton. <laughs> All right, we'll see you all. You guys have yourselves a good rest of the day. And uh, if, we, if we don't see you Wednesday, I, I doubt Thursday night I'll be home, but I'll be able to have times so we're gonna be turning and burning Friday morning. Um, in the weekend, I won't be able to come at you. So it could be not much of streaming this week. If I have internet Wednesday, we will, but Sunday night, probably not so could be next monday could be a week from now so y'all have yourselves a good rest of the week if we don't see you take care everybody goodbye say bye kids bye. well we hope that you enjoyed that video yeah it was a lot of fun again and uh make sure that you subscribe to the channel down there leave a comment if you remember watching this uh, live stream when it was live i know a lot of you from the gun and gamers community were around watching it's always fun to live stream those events, and I certainly plan to do a lot more live streaming. We would like to be able to run at least one a week coming up here, but we've got to earn the right here on YouTube, and I think it's 4,000 subscribers or something like that you have to unlock, and we're gonna go way past that. So if you could help us out and sub to the channel, we're gonna get that unlocked soon, and we'll start those live streams right here on the Gun and the Go YouTube channel. All right, well, we will catch you next time as we head down south to Alabama and Florida in 2020. Those live streams will be up next. Till next time, take care. Take care. <laughs>